Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Sam Bash, and I'm here today to break down one of the many trailers we witnessed during the big game, or more properly named I was tasked with finding every hint and hidden treasure I could possibly find in the new Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom trailer. Oh boy, it was a treat. Right off the bat, there are so many homages to other Jurassic Park films, but let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Here's a quick spoiler warning for the Jurassic Park franchise, Jurassic World 1, and the new one, and uh, dinosaurs in general. They're really cool, I don't want to spoil you on anything. Let's get started. <laughs> Universal's leaning into its scary roots. Love the music box recreation of the Jurassic Park theme. But that's not the only throwback in this scene. For example, the opening shot of the girl crying, shaking in her bed out of fear. This actually is probably a nod to children being a big part of the Jurassic Park franchise, from Lex and Tim in Jurassic Park, to Kelly in Lost World, my favorite out of the franchise, to Zack and Gray in Jurassic World. I'm skipping that kid who collected T-Rex P in Jurassic 3. How'd you get it? You don't want to know. But moving on, a kid being afraid in bed in a Jurassic Park film is not new for this series. This actually looks like somewhat of a recreation of when the T-Rex snuck into the base camp during Lost World. Almost a total recreation with his mouth, you know, hovering over the child. What is that? How the T-Rex was able to sneak into that camp and no one besides a few people woke up is literally beyond me. But also, also, there is another time a dino woke somebody up. Had to use that somewhere. Moving on. Sorry I got off track for just a second, but also pay attention here to the shadow being cast on the wall. Very scary indeed, and a very cool nod to this intimidating shadow from Jurassic Park. That scene will never not freak me out. It's even lining up with another figure in the room, specifically that fake horse, kind of like how it lined up with the mural of the Velociraptor. Next, you probably noticed right off the bat the infamous toe tap from the first Jurassic Park. This is when the Velociraptors are hunting the children in the park's kitchen. But look a little closer, this beast is actually a a lot different from a raptor, but there are some similar qualities. Could this be another Indominus Rex, like the genetically engineered dino from Jurassic World, or is this something new? Stay tuned, I've got some theories. Also, it had been announced that a chunk of this movie would take place off island, much like in Lost World, so this whole scene might be in San Diego, or some other city, probably not San Diego. There's going to be a lot of similarities to Lost World, so get ready, I'm excited, roll the next clip. Do you remember the first time you saw a dinosaur? Hey, Blue. We don't really believe it. It's like a miracle. Here we open up on a viral marketing clip we saw a few months back of a baby version of Blue the Velociraptor from Jurassic World imprinting on Owen, Chris Pratt's character. During this we hear Claire, Bryce Dallas Howard's character, doing some VO talking about the magic of seeing a dinosaur for the first time, which is pretty accurate to how we all felt watching the first Jurassic Park movie when the Brachiosaurus walked in the frame. Heck, we even get a recreation of that famous pan-up shot from the first film to the Apatosaurus walking through the wreckage of Jurassic World. I'm not sure if this is a Brachiosaurus based on the list of Jurassic World dinos, but hey, let me know if I'm mixing up my dinos in the comments down below. I'm not, I did my research. Really quick, we're gonna back it up just a little bit. We see the island's volcano erupting, which we saw in the first trailer as well, very scary. Also, all the dinos fleeing for their lives this is very sad. Right here though, I believe we see these flying boys. Those be pteranodons, the flying beasts from Jurassic World, and oh boy, they're very scary. <laughs> We also get a close-up of our new character, who on IMDb has been listed as Franklin, and while, frankly, his screaming does annoy the bejesus out of me, I do think I have somewhat of an idea what his role will be in all of this. He does serve a purpose, but more on that soon. And then we get a shot of a dino being airlifted off the island, and from what I've been able to gather, based on the list that I've combed over over and over again, this looks to either be a Baryonyx, one of the main bad dinosaurs of the movie, or a Sukumimus, but this is pretty hard to tell since it's so far away. However, pay attention to the background of the shot because some important stuff's happening. Notice the lava pouring down the cliffside over to the right of the screen, and our main two characters right here are totally drenched head to toe. I'm guessing this follows the death-defying plunge off the cliff in the gyrosphere. Just an observation, thought it'd be cool. Next clip. Something's coming. It's a T-Rex, it's a T-Rex. It's not a T-Rex.
Right off the bat, D27. What could that tag mean? I'm guessing it has to be like a tracker, similar to the one that the Dominus Rex dug out of itself in Jurassic World. But what does this code mean? Easy guess with the D, probably for dino, or possibly dino variant, as there are some genetic hybrids running around this island. 27, however, could mean a couple different things, either the 27th species of dino on the island, which doesn't quite make sense, since no website for Jurassic World or Fallen Kingdom shows that many dino species. Possibly this is the 27th genetic experiment, meaning that there are more hybrids running around the island, or, fun option, this is the 27th of this new hybrid, meaning that there are a whole bunch of these monsters. Who knows, maybe, I don't know, hooray. Also, pay attention to where Franklin is when this scene begins. He looks up from the screen, and then he's standing over by the wrecked computer consoles in this bunker, it looks like. My guess, he's the techie that every good team needs to help them hack their way to victory. Hooray again. Also, I'm glad that the T-Rex is getting more love in this movie than in Jurassic World, but how in the world would you fit it down there? Like, he's, it, that that thing has to be a Leo boy, a little skinny boy to fit in there. This could possibly be the Baryonyx, the breed I mentioned earlier, or possibly a new hybrid? Hmm, I know they, there are some similarities from the opening shot with that evil dino in this one, but their arm length do seem to be considerably different, so I'm gonna say there are two different dinos. Also, is that thing lava proof? No, right, that doesn't make any sense, the dinosaur wouldn't do that, but it looks like it just gets nipped. By it. Who knows? Next clip. Blue, come with me. Jurassic World. The island. You're all right. Easy, girl. All of that is in the past. Am I dead? Not yet, kid. Ooh, a lot of stuff happens here. It's a meaty clip. Let's sink our teeth into it. Wink, wink. Right off the bat, we see this scene once again of most likely Owen and Blue's reconnecting scene on the island. Blue has been running free for a while. Will she come with Owen off the island? Save her own life? Who knows? Also pay attention to that flipped Jeep back there. Could that possibly be the Jeep that fell off the cliff in the first Jurassic Park film? Who knows? That big tree behind it does sure look familiar, but hey, it's too early to tell. Then we see the same shot of Claire and Franklin flying off the cliff, screaming and their heads off and then <gasps> these trailers just keep on shooting themselves in the foot plot wise. In the first trailer we get a glimpse of the Metricanthosaurus or the Carnothaurus, and then boom, it's taken out by the T to the Rex. And now we get confirmation that Owen does survive getting engulfed in that ash cloud from the first trailer. We then hear Eli Mills, Rafe Small's character, saying that Jurassic World is a thing of the past, hinting to possibly yet again making a new park on the mainland, or instead possibly using the dinos in other fields besides entertainment. Jurassic World director Colin Trevorrow stated during the release of his film that follow-up films could play with the idea of these dinos used in agriculture, or medicine, or most likely war, which was a big sell for Vincent D'Onofrio's character in Jurassic World. Eli Mills could be referring to any of these options, and there are some hints to them later, but we'll get to that soon. We then see a large syringe moving blood down. Where's it going? And then we see a shot of Daniela Pineda's character, who has yet to be named on IMDb, looking to be operating on Blue. Not sure what could have happened to her. Possibly Blue was injured during the eruption. Maybe she was shot. But this does feel like a nice throwback to when the team in Lost World had to operate on the baby T-Rex. Freaking love that scene. Also shout out to the team behind Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Love the use of practical effects. It's amazing. Also pay attention to when Eli says all of that is in the past and then boom, we see the same shot of the T-Rex taking down the Metricanthosaurus or the Carnothaurus. I'm gonna say both to cover my bases. You can argue about it in the comments down below. I know it looks like the Carnotaurus, Carnothaurus, but the website for this movie doesn't list that species. But anyway, I wanted to point out that this is a nod to that awesome final T-Rex shot from Jurassic Park when he's screaming after taking down all the Velociraptors. Here's a clip in case you forgot. Also love the detail of the scars from the Velociraptor fight from Jurassic Park. So cool. We then get our cast running away from explosions caused by the lava making its way through their camp, hitting barrels of fuel. I'm guessing Claire is about to do a jump, possibly with a car. And then there's this awesome shot of Owen jumping out of his way of a bound up T-Rex. Oh, <gasps> gives me goosebumps just looking at it. By the way, that looks far too small of a little container to house a T-Rex. And why in the world would Owen need to crawl through there to get anywhere? But I mean, it's still cool, but why just go go outside? I don't know. At least the T-Rex is getting off the island and will hopefully find a nice family to adopt it. Next clip. I want to show you the future. What is that thing? They made it. Oh. 
This might actually be the first introduction in the movie of our new hybrid dinosaur, which in this clip here with Toby Jones officially reveals its name, the Indoraptor. That name had been teased for a while, but now it's official and it's freaky. Also check out those codes behind Toby Jones. Those would be shorthand names for the British pound up top, then the Euro, then the Hong Kong dollar, then Japanese yen, and then the Singapore dollar, meaning that these people are gathered to bid on the dinosaurs rescued from the island. And my guess is that the Indoraptor isn't the only dino up for a bid. <gasps> we then see Owen Claire and the young girl from earlier who look to be spying on the bidding going on for the Indoraptor. Again, I say this is the reveal scene because our main cast seems surprised to see it, to discover it and it's being rolled out in a cage on display for a big reveal. That's how it works, people. In the next scene, it looks like there's a little nod as to how freaking terrifying this Indoraptor actually is. Check out the feet of this beast. Look at where they're at in this room. And look right there as it steps down on some toys. I'm thinking that little brown toy right there is either a Brachiosaurus or the Apatosaurus, the one in the movie, or possibly the T-Rex, mainly because of the symbolism of this monster stepping on a fan favorite killer. We then get a save from Blue, so yay, she most likely made it off the island, but pay attention here. Check out the underside of the Indoraptor's tail. It almost has like a dark blue coloration to it. Remember any other dinos with a blue coloration? That's right, a blue. That was an easy one, kids. We had fun there. So maybe the scientists use Blue's DNA to help engineer the Indoraptor, which could rightly piss off our main characters enough for them to step it up and protect the dinosaurs. The next shot, we see Claire with a gun aiming it somewhere towards the inside of that young girl's house, most likely because it's the only house we've seen in this film so far, and the coloration of the roof looks like the same coloration outside the girl's bedroom, and it's raining in both shots, so these are probably connected. Is she trying to take down the Indoraptor? Raptor? Possibly, you let me know. And then my favorite part, we get a few scenes of the dinos going crazy. First up, the T-Rex looking at a helicopter. Really hope we see the T-Rex take it down, unless it's our main characters. But still, maybe they survive, it would just be cool. We then see a jailbreak of sorts with dinos running free and taking out the guards, then a screaming baryonyx or a Sukumimus, probably going to eat that dude, let's be honest. And a Pteranodon taking a man away into the clouds, to heaven most likely. Can't wait for these dinos to roam free in this forest facility, I'm guessing, based on the pine trees below the uh, Toronto Don. Maybe they're in Montana. It would be a good place to take dinos. There's a lot of space. On that happy note, let's watch the end of this trailer. You need to get us out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Last shot, I had to save it for you guys. I'm guessing this is the facility where all the dinos are being kept after they're, you know, shepherded off the island. And the home of that little girl is very close to here since she's with the two main characters. We get this cheap jump scare with the dino killing the guard, but it does look to be the Indoraptor based on the arm length. That's my guess, at least. And there you have it, folks. All the Easter eggs and hidden references I could find in the big game Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom trailer. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know your favorite Easter eggs or the ones I missed in the comments down below or on Twitter at only stupid answers, but yank out the vowels from stupid. There you go. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe, and check out all of our other breakdowns for the big game trailers, all the new trailers coming out. I'm also doing an MCU rewatch series, which is a bunch of fun, and we do a new Rockstars news segment every week. There's so much content for you guys, it's like Christmas. I'm Sam Basher again, and I'll see you next time.